After weeks of threatening escalating tariffs on all goods imported from Mexico, President Trump suddenly backed off on Friday, after Mexico apparently agreed to clamp down harder on the flow of Central American migrants heading north to the U.S. Under the deal, Mexico will deploy National Guard troops to its southern border with Guatemala and allow the U.S. to expand a program that makes asylum seekers wait out their cases in Mexico. Well Trump celebrated well. the deal as a triumph. A For many years, people tried to get what we got in a period of a couple of days, and they couldn't get it. But so did Mexico's president, Andrés Manuel López Obrador. On Saturday morning, thousands of Mexicans gathered in Tijuana to watch him take a victory lap. Celebramos el importante acuerdo de ayer. Agradezco también la solidaridad de los mexicanos que no titubearon en manifestar su apoyo en la defensa de la dignidad de nuestro país y preservar la amistad con el pueblo de Estados Unidos. Earlier in the day, volunteers from López Obrador's party gathered to get the celebration started. ¡Viva Tijuana! ¡Viva, ¡Viva López Obrador! Esto nos da mucha alegría, nos da mucho gusto, porque significa que hemos triunfado, hemos ganado, eh, salimos adelante. Eh, sí hubo concesiones por parte de México, ¿no? Con respecto al tema migratorio para llegar a ese acuerdo. Y hay aquellos que dicen que el acuerdo representa una capitulación por parte de México frente a Estados Unidos. Fíjate, Noriega, que sí hubo eh, una respuesta, pero que era algo que ya estaba por nosotros acordado. It's true that López Obrador didn't make any new concessions. If anything, the deal gave him cover to pursue controversial policies he was pursuing anywhere. López Obrador is already more popular than any Mexican president in recent memory, and he's learned to use threats from the North to unite his base. He even got some migrant advocates to back the deal by promising more resources for Central Americans who find themselves stuck in Mexico. Yo te conocí en el, en el refugio, en el albergue que maneja tu organización, ¿no? Este acuerdo, de cierto modo, quiere decir que va a haber aún más migrantes centroamericanos esperando sus casos en este lado de la frontera, ¿no? Claro. Eh, sí. Pero entonces, aún así, lo apoyan y aún así apoyan al presidente. Los presidentes o las administraciones pasadas no hicieron nada. Ahora que está en una nueva administración, que no son los mismos partidos políticos, que están entrando un partido nuevo, Hay que darle la oportunidad también de que trabaje. En seis meses no puede arreglar las cosas. Que internamente, por ejemplo, no estamos de acuerdo en muchas cosas. Nosotros no queremos que militaricen la, la, la frontera la sur. sur claro. Como le dijimos a Trump que no queremos que militarizara. Pero nosotros ahorita estamos en torno a nuestro presidente. De entrada, tenemos que apoyarlo y respaldarlo. Y hemos avanzado. Cerrando fila. Pero cerrando fila. Despite the fanfare, the agreement will almost certainly do nothing to mitigate the actual crisis. Last month, the number of families and children apprehended at the border continued to climb to unprecedented levels. Just across the border from where López Obrador gave his victory speech, a shelter that opened in response to the emergency has seen more than 16,000 migrants cycle through its doors since it opened in November. Recently, the shelter saw a wave of migrants with the flu. Doctors who work there say many of them got sick in overcrowded federal detention centers. Pues cuando venimos, lo primero que fue a ir al médico. Por lo mismo, por la enfermedad y todos. ¿Y cuando llegaron acá todavía estaban enfermos? Exactamente, todavía veníamos con gripa. ¿Dónde agarraron la gripa? Y la agarramos en lo que fue el trayecto de, de migración. ¿Eso cómo fue? Es decir, fue por... Porque eh, había por, otra gente con gripa eh, en donde los, los, donde los Así es, los ya venía gente infectada y como estuve bastante tiempo, entonces la niña ya al cambio de seis días ya empezó a sentir calentura. This shelter opened when the federal government, which used to help asylum seekers reach their final destinations, started instead to release families in border cities with virtually no support. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. All right. Nathan Fletcher, 
a member of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, helped secure a disused county building for the shelter to expand, and is now working to find them a permanent location. Donald Trump effectively ended the safe release program, which has worked for decades. And I strongly believe they only did it to manufacture a crisis. Uh, this gives them something they can go on Fox News and, and talk nonsense about. It gives them something to tweet about. Um, but they're essentially creating a crisis to inflame their base because they think it helps their politics. I understand where that's coming from. Right. But at the same time, you have 132,000 people. Most of them, families or unaccompanied children, crossing the border in a month. Isn't there a crisis there already, even before the way that the administration is responding to it? And you cannot convince me that a country that 40-something years ago could put a man on the moon and bring him back cannot today figure out how we process families and give them safe shelter while, while we determine the validity of their asylum claim. I, I don't buy that this is an insurmountable challenge that the, the, the greatest country in the world is incapable of confronting. Um, I think it's a president who has an agenda and he wants to drive an agenda and he wants to inflame an agenda. Uh, and I think that in large part he's succeeding in that. Um, you know, we just have to make sure that that failure doesn't have dire consequences both for these migrant families uh, and for the broader communities that we all represent.